Welcome back to Altium Academy, everybody. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be talking about the different contributions to losses in high-speed and RF transmission lines. We're gonna be looking at copper losses and dielectric losses and how they compare to each other in terms of magnitude. One thing we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna look at a free calculator that I've created for you to use in your designs. Check out the link in the description and you can download that calculator. I'll run over how to use it and, of course, what all the results mean. First, let's get into some theory and then we'll jump into a demo in All Team Designer with this calculator. Let's get started. So before we get started and look at this calculator that's going to reveal the difference between copper and dielectric losses, let's do a quick review of the different loss factors that appear in RF and high-speed PCBs. So we can typically write the total loss in dB as a sum of the uh, copper loss and the dielectric loss summed together. So we have these two different loss contributions and it's possible that in different frequency ranges, one of these loss terms is going to dominate. So that's quite important because if you are trying to reduce loss in a board, you need to know in which regime you're operating in, whether you have dominant copper loss or dominant dielectric loss. So what you really need to know is the frequency dependence of these two terms. So for the copper loss, we have a bit of a complex expression. We have basically 4.34 times the resistance at DC. And then we have this term square root of frequency times the skin resistance, and then all of this is over the characteristic impedance. So you should know that for a skin resistive term, the square root dependence defines the frequency dependence. So this W here is actually an omega, and it is the angular frequency at which we're operating. So remember, omega equals two pi times F, okay? So we have a square root dependence here, assuming we have a relatively flat or constant impedance over frequency, which we typically only have about maybe a few percent variance across a broad frequency range. Next, this is for the copper. Now let's look at the dielectric. So for the dielectric, we have a little bit of a simpler function. This is 4.34, and then this is multiplied by omega, and then the capacitance of the line, and then the characteristic impedance, and then the loss tangent. So here we have a linear dependence on the frequency. Remember, omega is two pi times f. Here we have directly proportional to omega, so we're directly proportional to the frequency here. So this is a straight line dependence. Now normally, when we're looking at losses on a line, whether it's simulation or a direct measurement of losses, you're not looking at one of these two things individually. What you're actually looking at, say in an S21 plot, is the insertion loss. So the insertion loss could look something like this. And of course, as you get to higher frequencies, you can expect to see more waviness due to really high return loss. But in general, in these lower frequency ranges, you see something that looks kind of like this. So the shape of the curve reflects the different contributions from our copper and our dielectric losses. Now, if we just plot these individually, let's say we plot alpha copper versus frequency, we would get a graph that looks something like this, where it has more of a square root dependence and then levels off. Whereas if we plot the dielectric portion, it's going to be a straight line. Now, how do we know which of these is dominant at any given frequency? Well, what we need to do is actually calculate the various contributions from them. And we can do that using a spreadsheet that I've created in Excel. Now, there's one thing here that I didn't mention earlier when I was talking about the copper loss. And anyone that knows a little bit about PCB materials and RF design will know that it's not just the skin resistance we have to worry about here. It's actually the copper roughness, which we quantify using this K, and the skin resistance. So rougher copper creates higher skin resistance. And it essentially artificially increases the skin resistance and makes the, uh, makes the transmission line appear as if it's thinner. That's one way to think of it. 
And so what that does is it increases your copper loss contribution. And so this is one reason why we sometimes talk about much smoother copper in high speed designs and RF designs, because when the copper is smoother, this K term gets closer and closer to one, whereas it gets much larger as you get to higher frequencies. Now that we've looked at this, Let's take a look at this calculator and we can put in some real material numbers and see in what frequency ranges we actually get higher or lower copper or dielectric losses. Now I'm inside of a spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel and I'm gonna use this spreadsheet to show some comparisons between copper loss and dielectric loss. Now you can download this spreadsheet from the link in the description. So the way this spreadsheet works is I have some values here that I've calculated from Altium Designer using the impedance tool in the layer stack manager. So here we have the uh, inductance and capacitance per unit inch and the propagation constant uh, from the layer stack manager calculated for a microstrip trace. So you can see down here there's a tab for microstrip and one for strip line. And then I've entered in my chosen geometry here. And then once you enter that in with your dielectric constant information, you can see right here that it spits out these values in the properties panel. So you can plug those in and what the calculator sheet does is it calculates the copper and the dielectric loss. Then over here I have another graph which if I just rescale shows the sum of these two loss factors. So here you can see this uh, sum curve on the right. Now what we see here for these two dielectric values and for this particular trace is that there's this very small region in the low frequency range where copper loss and dielectric loss essentially overlap each other and then eventually the dielectric loss completely takes over and dominates in this transmission line. You can see that here in the total loss curve as well. There's just this tiny bit of curvature at these low frequencies, and then it becomes a straight line. So if you see a loss curve like this, this will tell you that you are dominated by dielectric loss. The copper loss is small in comparison to the dielectric loss. So let's just see what happens if we have this rough copper foil and we start to reduce the loss by going to a more advanced dielectric. So for example, let's suppose that we go to an advanced FR4 and we change the loss tangent uh, to a lower value. So let's say 0 0.008. So if we go down to this 0 0.008 value, you can see that of course, as we expect, this curve, uh, this blue curve basically moved up the graph. And so what that does is it expands this frequency range where the copper loss and the dielectric loss are comparable. You can see here that there's a little bit more curvature at low frequencies, but then eventually it becomes linear again. Now if we go to a much more advanced laminate, like let's say an ultra low loss FR4 or even a PTFE laminate, we would be at something like 0 .0013. So that's a pretty big reduction in the dielectric loss. Now at that value, you can see here that of course the dielectric loss is much lower than the copper loss and you have this really big gap between these two loss factors all the way up to this 20 gigahertz frequency. And then you can see here in the total loss curve that we have a lot of curvature here at these lower frequencies. So this is a pretty clear trend. So now what I'm going to do is just drag this over here and I'm going to fix the scale on the Y axis so that it doesn't keep resizing on me each time I change the loss tangent. And let's just set this to, let's say, negative one. Now, what we can do is if we just start with this higher loss tangent value, we can iterate through to lower loss tangent values and we can see a value that we start to converge to as we get to lower and lower loss tangents. So here at 0 0.02, you can see that the curve doesn't even fit in the graph. If we go down to, let's say, 0 0.005, now it fits on the graph. And then if we go down to, let's say, 0 0.008, which is basically what you would see in like Rogers 3003, you get to this low loss tangent value of, let's see here, about 0.345 dB per inch. Now, the theoretical limit, of course, is the case where we have a zero loss tangent. Now, you can never have a perfectly zero loss tangent, but you can get pretty close. Now, the theoretical limit with zero loss tangent is, of course, given with a zero in this entry right here, and then we would have a loss of 0.3. 277 dB per inch.
So as we go from 0 0.008 to a lower value, you can see that we stop getting any ROI for going to a more and more advanced laminate. So this is where the copper is really dominating as we can see in this graph. So when we're at these really low loss tangent values, of course, it should be obvious by this point, we really have no choice but to do two possible things. One is to reduce the copper loss through making the copper less rough, or we can reduce the skin effect resistance through another method, which is of course to make the trace wider. So just with these values, I can already start making the copper less rough. What I can do is I can reduce my 10 point roughness to let's say two microns, and then I can reduce the nodule size that makes up my rough striations in the, uh, in the copper foil to let's say 0.5 microns. So if I do that, you can see here that I get the, about the same benefit as I would get if I were to go to a perfectly uh, zero loss laminate uh, with a loss tangent of zero, right? When we had a loss tangent of zero, our loss was 0.277 dB per inch. When we just go to a somewhat smoother laminate, we get the same improvement and we get to about 0.288 dB per inch. So that's the first thing that you can do to attempt to reduce the copper loss in your interconnect. So what's the other thing we can do? Well, we could go to a wider trace and that would require for this uh, thickness of laminate going to a lower decay value. So if I just go back into the layer stack manager, plug in my smaller decay value, then I can copy these values into the spreadsheet and then we can see how the loss curve changes. So now I've copied all of these values into my sheet and let's just take a look at what happened to the loss. So previously we had uh, 0.345 dB per inch and then when we went to a ideal laminate with zero loss tangent that went to 0.277 dB per inch. Now, if I just made my trace wider a little bit, you see I get almost that same level of reduction to 0.291 dB per inch just by making the trace a little bit wider. So that required going from a DK of four down to a DK of three. Now you'll notice here, it's not actually using this DK value. What it's actually using is the gamma value to calculate the DK effective and then the rough decay effective. So it's really using this value to determine it. But regardless, when we have that lower decay value, you can see very clearly that we get almost the same loss reduction as if we were to go to a infinitely low uh, loss tangent laminate. So this illustrates something really important with these more advanced laminates is that in order to work with more advanced designs, it really is a story of going to low decay. And the main reason is that, of course, it allows you to use these wider traces. Now, this is really important for something like HDI. It's also really important for RF design. In HDI, in order to get to these very thin layers that have controlled impedance, you want to make sure that you both stay in the uh, subtractive regime if possible. Um, you also want to make sure that you don't create too much copper loss when you go to those thinner line widths. So using that lower DK laminate allows you to use those wider line widths and that reduces the copper loss as we just saw in this sheet. Now, if we just go back over to this plot and compare, you can see why this would be really good for RF design. Of course, with RF design, we normally focus on the dielectric loss, but really this curve shows that the copper loss is what's dominant, especially in these frequency ranges where we might be dealing with an RF interface or an RF device. So those are the main ways that we can continue to reduce copper loss. It is, of course, to go to smoother copper, or we can go to a wider uh, trace. And just for fun, let's see how much uh, more we can continue to reduce this copper loss with going to a really low profile copper foil. Let's suppose we go down to a copper foil with an average roughness of, let's say, one micron, and then our nodule size of about 0.3 microns and we can see what the loss value is. So we got a pretty good improvement in the loss and then over here in the total loss, you can see that we're even farther below the value for the theoretically perfect PCB laminate. That theoretically perfect PCB laminate limited us to 0.277 dB per inch. This gets us down to 0.233 dB per inch. 
Now make sure to check out the blog linked in the description. Um, that blog also shows how you can use this kind of process to calculate S parameters. There's another spreadsheet that you can access in that blog. You can also download this spreadsheet from the link in the description and you can start using it in your own designs. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. The next time somebody on LinkedIn tells you that you have to use a super advanced PTFE laminate to support Bluetooth and Wi-Fi frequencies, you now have all the knowledge that you need to debate them and win. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to get more debate-worthy knowledge, and of course, leave your comments and questions in the comments section. And finally, don't forget to ask your fabricator about your stack-up materials, folks.